Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Brother Chris. I believe today is the 14th of October. This is our uh, book video study group. This is an example of how we all collaborate together. It is uh, real early in the morning. We actually like the early morns versus the evening because the evenings were kind of run down and we bore a lot through the day. So the mornings were fresh and it's good to start out with the word of God in your minds, our minds in the morning. Um, we try to just come on being ourselves, just, just who we are. And we try to go on live and, you know, not editing, but sometimes things happen. So I have to edit anyway. So this is recorded on Facebook, but shown on YouTube. The reason it's shown on YouTube is because, uh, I believe midway and the recordings the sound goes out on facebook i don't know why so i uh, i'm just starting to uh record them and show them on youtube so uh if anybody sees this and you want to join up with us let us know by our email and also text us and you can um text me on my cell phone or you can text me in Messenger. Uh, today we're going to be going over a title called What Are um, Christian Believers Weapons of Warfare? Seeing that we can't use knives and guns, you know, carnal weapons. What are our weapons of warfare? So I'm going to unmute the video study group everybody's on and they're waiting on me you guys can mm -hmm. tune in i hope you get blessed by something you hear in jesus name be blessed let's see okay you guys uh thank you for uh being faithful i do want to remind y'all what the word do, what it do for us because the Bible does record the benefits of getting the word of God and his scriptures to go with it um, number one it guarantees everlasting life by you getting the word and that's John 5 24 and 6 53 and 58 Number two, it keeps us clean from world, worldly filth. And that's John 15 and 3, Ephesians 5, 26, Psalms 119 and 9. Number three, uh, your prayers are heard. Just by you getting the word, it says your prayers is heard. People who neglect the word, Proverbs 28 9 says God he, he, your prayers is not heard it's an abomination before him uh, number four it's our daily food for the inner man not this outer flesh man and that's found in Deuteronomy 8 and 3 Matthew 4 and 4 and Luke 4 and 4 it, it guides us on the path of life you know, we're we're on a path of life. That's Psalms 119, 105. It guides us in a dark world from the wrong path. Because there is a wrong path that people are taking. And that's found in Psalms 17 and 4. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's what Psalms 119 verses 105 says. Number 6. It keeps us from sinning. That's found in Psalms 119.11. Number seven, it makes us alive. The, the word will actually quicken you, make you alive, and it comforts us in affliction. That's Psalms 119.107 and 119.50. Number eight, it gives us hope. 
Psalms 119, 81, 119, 114, 114. Number nine, it gives understanding to the simple. Psalms 119, 130. Number 10, it orders our steps in life. Psalms 119, 133. Number 11, it borns us all over again. We're born again by the, by the word of God. 1 Peter 1, 23. Number 12, it, um, it's a long list of benefits and that's found in 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 through 17. And we, uh, I'm looking at like this old older card that I used to always read to you guys when we first got started. And John chapter 9 verses 39 it I wrote before getting into God's Word that he will show us revelations we got to pray we have to pray and ask God you know basically tell him we cannot see that we are blind and we need him to open our eyes because uh, let's just, I'm going to read John chapter 9 verses 39, basically as a reminder. If somebody have their Bible um, up and ready to go, do you go, can somebody read John 9, 39? My phone is power, is powering on. Let's see. There it is. I have it if, if no one else has it. Yeah, thank you. Can you read it, please? Yes, John 9 and 39 says, And Jesus says, For judgment have I come into this world, that, that they which see not might see, and they that which see might be made blind. Yeah, read it one more time, Don. And Jesus said, For judgment, I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they that which see but might be blind. So he said, the Lord Jesus said, That is a judgment. He said, I came for this reason. Anybody that's basically saying, I'm all, I'm good, I can see, you know, I already know. You know how people, they'll say, I, I already heard that, I already know. And then he he's like, blinded, blind. But anyone who says, Lord, I cannot see, you know, in like in a humility way, he will grant sight to those people. Um, Luke chapter 24 verses 44 and 45 kind of shows him doing that like if somebody don't believe what I'm saying it's in the scriptures showing this thing happening let me turn my ringer off Like anybody that's new to the Bible, if you all didn't know these things, it's like, it's an eye opener. It should be like, wow, I, I didn't know that, you know? But we only go by what the Lord put in his word and he want reiterated. He wants it reiterated to the people. I'm going to 
Look up Luke 24, 44, and 45. Yeah, I already um, told the live that it's real early in the morning, so we're just getting started. So we're excused. <laughs> and also that when we have study in the evenings, we're not, you know, our energy's all gone because, you know, during the day we use it up. You know, it's like it's warfare going just going outside of your house being on the job it's like you're drained you know try not to let anybody drain you yeah this is when the lord jesus was on the road to emmaus and he was he was talking to two of the disciples and he was he obviously was in another form because it says you know it, you know he was in another form the scripture says he took on another form i don't understand that i don't know like what he looked like or what that means that he took on another form but if he was that same form before he you know died on the cross they would have said hey there he is right here you know but it was almost like they didn't see that I can't explain that now it says in 42 and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and did eat before them and he said unto them these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And it says in 45, it says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Did anybody, um, did anybody turn to that with me as I was reading it? Because I don't want anybody taking my word for it. Can somebody post, yes. can somebody post that in the timeline? And just put uh, the Lord Jesus has to open your understanding to the scriptures. And also, um, he he can also blind he can blind you. I'm going to show you a scripture on that. And that one's uh, Luke 24, verse I'm going to read 15, then 16, it says, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that you have one toward another as you walk and are sad and then they explained to him you know all the stuff that had happened and they didn't believe it because in verse 21 it says but we trusted that it had been he which should have had redeemed Israel they they was like we thought basically he was going to Jesus was going to redeem Israel Oh, my phone twitched out on me.
That's weird. Uh, let me get my other phone. But basically, the Lord Jesus can block people from seeing a thing. If you all did not know. But we're, we're hoping that the Lord bless us, that we will not be people who are ever learning and won't be able to come into the knowledge of the truth we want him to open our eyes and we be illuminated and we advance in him, you know, because the word has benefits to it. So in saying that, let us pray to our Lord who is here. The Lord is here with us. The Lord is in all of you. You are his temples. You are his holy temples. So bless Father, thank you for this day, blessed Father. Blessed Father, we come before you saying thank you. Everyone's muted, but I know they're giving you thanks. They woke up, Lord, giving you thanks, just thanking you. We thank you all through the day. We pray all through the day, Lord Father. You hear our voices, your eyes is on us. Your ears is open to our prayers. You said you would deliver our souls from death and you will keep us alive in famine and not a natural famine of food, natural food, but of hearing of your words, Lord. And that we don't want to be taken away, oh Father, and you have not. And we love your word. We, we have been given the revelation of you that it's a food source for us and without it, we are dead while we yet live. Some people think just because they see a person walking around that they are alive, but spiritually some people are dead while they yet live. But Lord Father, not so, not so. You have blessed us with your word, Father. And I thank you for quickening us, Father. You do quicken us. You do go around our beds when we're sleeping, Lord. And you sing, your, your word says you sing songs of deliverance, Lord God. And you touch us, you quicken us. You, I, I just know it, Lord God. We, be, we can go to bed faint, feeling like we're about to give up, Lord, and wake up and it's all gone. We could have a thought of this and that, a wrong thought, and then you'll hide that from us. And just, you do amazing things, Lord God. You are so good to us. You do things we don't even know about. So that's why I say thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. And for thank you for your Holy Spirit and the holy angels that stand by. They are standing by even now, Lord, hearkening to the voice of your word. You gave them a command to keep us in all of our ways and uphold us in their hands, lest we should dash our foot against the stone, Lord God. And we just thank you, Father, for your hedge of protection. And even when you allow things to test us, you know, Satan sometimes, he'll say, I want to sift this one and that one. Lord, you will let him, but you won't let us be like overcome, Lord. You won't put more on us than we can bear, Lord God. But it's for our growth, Lord God, that you uh, allow certain things. And we learn that in your word, Father. So... Thank you for what you do, Father. Um, you showed me it's kind of like the military, they copied you, Lord. It's like you you basically strip us of our identity. You break us to make us, Lord God. And you would allow, you allow trials to come and the fire to be turned up, Lord God. And then we will be true soldiers for you that when you... Uh, tell us to do this and do that, Lord. We don't question it. We just quickly obey, Lord. 
And thank you for taking out a stony heart, Father, and giving us a heart of flesh, Lord. That Thank you for that circumcision of the heart, Lord. Spiritual. This is all spiritual, and you did it for us, Lord. We trust. We trust, Lord God. And just thank you, Father, for everyone that's persevering, pressing, Lord. You, you said these people should not deny your name and to keep the faith, Lord. And to be grounded and settled, Lord, in this truth, Lord. For the truth is in you. We are convinced. We are convinced, Lord God, that this is the truth. That you are truth itself, Lord God. And you say, everyone that is of the truth hears your voice. And we will hear your voice, Lord. Lord, I pray for everybody who's uh, getting distracted. They're getting pulled away. They off into all kinds of stuff, Lord. I pray you will reel them in, pull them back in, draw them in, Lord, convict them, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, we love you. We bless you. Welcome, Holy Spirit, into our midst. You are welcome here, Holy Spirit. I pray everyone will welcome you into their homes, wherever they at, in their cabs or their cars anywhere they're at lord because you said you're not only in us but you're with us and you are upon us for service lord god i decrease lord god i pray your people will say that they i that they decrease lord and that you arise O lord father arise in me as i take a seat O lord god let your enemies be scattered lord let any uh, enemy that's thinking about trying to come against your people, coming against your telecast, Lord, your signals, let them be brought down, Lord. Let them be as the, the, the trash, Lord, that the wind drives away, Lord God. You are, are so um, beautiful, Lord, seated upon the throne, Lord. You are upon the throne of our hearts, Lord. We won't forget you, Lord God. Thank you for your word that you have for us today. We're here for a couple of hours. This is really nothing, Lord. We're not doing anything, Lord. If we are talking about I got to go do this and do that, it's just a bunch of foolishness, Lord. I must admit it's garbage. It's foolishness. You see what we do. And Lord, I pray we will think on you. I pray your people will hear your voice saying, cut that off, go pray, uh, meditate on my word, uh, whatever you will have us to do, Lord God, or help that person, pray with this person, you know, Lord, we will hear your spirit and obey quickly, Lord, and not delay, Lord God, I pray we have a heart like the Lord Jesus' heart who said, I must be about my father's business. And, I, and nevertheless, the Lord Jesus says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I, I pray we have that same spirit, Lord, and passion as the Lord Jesus have, Lord. Father, we bless you. We love you. You are here. We gather in the name of the Lord Jesus the Lord Yeshua, your Christ. And you said where two or three be gathered together in your name, you are here in the midst, you are here. Welcome, Lord. We reverence you, Lord. Let no flesh glory in your presence, Lord. I pray reverence be here. Let us feel your reverence, Lord. Let your people reverence you, Lord God. Let us reverence you. Now we love you. There's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. Perfected love cast out fear. Fear has torment, Lord. It brings torment with it. And so, Father, we bless you. We praise you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, whoever agree, amen. 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 Yeah, I kind of wanted to... Amen. amen. I kind of wanted to have you guys ask questions or if it's something that um, happened during the week, you know, from the last study, 
that you guys want to talk about and say like how can I like you know what I mean if you have a question like basically like a free-for-all in a way like we normally would do before I get into some of these you know scriptures because I don't want it to be just turn here turn here you know what I mean I want to keep it real it is all real but you know what I mean there there's some people that's watching us they're like you know they're they're wanting to hear from the Lord and they will hear from the Lord through us through real life stuff that we're going through I just want you guys to be open and and what's the word I'm looking for here what's that word transparent yeah just I mean you don't have to tell your business, you know what I mean? <laughs> I have a question. And, and you guys are, it is early, so we're excused. <laughs> I have a question. Go ahead, buddy. Lord, I guess the question for me to ask is, as someone who is, who deems himself a Christian or follower of Christ, what is the importance of reading from the word versus just having a relationship with Christ where you're talking to him through prayer and living a righteous and godly life. What, why is it significant and important for us as believers to tune into the word and read the Bible? Oh, our, Deshaun, isn't that funny? Everybody, Deshaun wasn't on when I was reading the benefits. <laughs> Remember, Deshaun, you said that you tune in later, so you must not have been on because I gave yeah. I gave twelve, but um, I'm not gonna say the scriptures. But in the beginning of this video, w when you play it back, I want you to play it back. You're gonna hear the scriptures, but basically, it makes us alive. It it actually quickens us you know without it we won't get it we won't get that jolt you know it, it, I, I have to say something you know you guys know what a jolt is right <laughs> it makes it makes us alive it comforts us in our afflictions the, the Bible says this it gives us hope without the word we're hopeless. It it gives us it gives understanding to simple the people who are simple. It orders our steps in life. It borns us again, all over again. We were born once, like naturally, but to be reborn is by that word. Um, it keeps us from sinning, and that's a scripture that says that. It guides us on the path of life. It guides us in a dark world from the wrong path. It's our daily food for the inner man. Your prayers are heard. By you giving heed to God's word, your prayers are heard. Anybody who turned their ears or stopped their ears at his word, he's not even hearing your prayers. I think that's why people say, can you pray for me? They'll say, hey, can you lift up a prayer for me? Because they figure your prayers is getting through. But you know what? I just want to tell the live or anybody that, that's hearing me, we can pray for you, but we're not the one to grant that thing. You know what I mean? We got our faith is strong for you and for that thing. But it's the Lord who has to say yes or no. Uh, it keeps us clean from worldly filth. You know, the Lord says, now you are clean by the word, you see, which I have spoken. Imagine if you don't take a natural bath, you're dirty and stinky. So spiritually, the word keeps us washed, you know. Uh, it guarantees everlasting life. 
I wanted to add to Go ahead, uh. praying for someone. We also have to be praying the will of God. Sometimes it's not the will of God for someone to come out of a situation. Hmm. At least not at that time. It could be forthcoming. I know oftentimes when we pray, people want prayer to manifest today. You know, hands being laid on today. But it has to be within God's will. And there's many scriptures that provide we must pray the will of God. And how do you know the will of God? How do you know the mind of God? It's through the studying of the word. And that's what Chris is talking about. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Don mentioned an important scripture. It says, if we pray um, God's will, he hears us. It's like anything that's not his will, he don't hear those prayers. I just want, well, I'm not going to, I'm like, if you, if you pray to him to save you, that's his will. You, you see what I mean? You can't like say, Lord, bless me with this car and show me you're real. You know what I mean? Then I'll believe, or I don't know what other examples to give, but I think you all understand it. We have to pray his will. I'm going to I'm going to actually find that one. Deshaun, was your uh question answered or was you looking for something some something more? No, my question was answered. Thank you. Yeah, but all those scriptures to those items is in the beginning of this video. Uh, I don't even know if you all listened to the video on other days, like go back and listen. First John chapter five, if somebody can help me uh, post this in the timeline and verse uh, 14. 14 and 15 it says and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us he continues to hear us see when it's when we pray God you know what I mean when you know you're praying God's will that's your confidence and you can even tell father you can say and father it's your will you know He's, he's hearing you. Verse 15, it says, And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him because we prayed his will. So another question is, do you all know what his will is? Like, you would have to do study to know oh that's the will of God oh that's the will you know what I mean pray pray his will you know some people I I, I, I I promise you some people they just want a quick fix or they just want God to get them out of that thing nobody wants to stay in anything you know pray I get out of this now you know, the Lord may not want you to, them to get out now. You know, it's beneficial. We don't want to go through anything. You know what I mean? People whine just for a little nothing. I try from from the stuff I was taken through. I put myself through some stuff too, you all. Just so you know, some stuff is not the devil. It's not God, you know, his sanctification process. It's us. We don't acknowledge him and ask him, is should I should I do this, Lord? And wait, you know, and see what answer we get. We just go do, right? And then we gotta pay the consequence. We gotta pay for that. Did you all know that? That we cause a lot of afflictions on ourselves. Yes, I know. I mean, you guys can um, yeah. open your mics one at a time or whatever. But imagine that. It's like the Lord will 
allow things. He'll use anything to, you know, just look at it like the army, right? They get up in people's face. They're spitting in their face. They're, they're saying bad words. They're telling you, just quit. Go home to mama. You know, why did you even join them? You know, they're breaking you. I, you know what I'm saying? So the Lord, he'll have that stuff happen to us and we're not to talk back. We're not to, you know, say something to that person. You know, Don, you, you know, she she told me, the Lord told her, I'm going to grow you up at this job. And these people was cussing her out and all kinds of stuff. And he said, forgive them. And she was right. They was wrong. And he said, Don, tell him. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Um, yeah, so I, when the Lord first saved me, and I was put on a job right after that, he says, I'm going to send you there. And I, he's having this conversation with me, and I'm going to grow you up there. I didn't know exactly what he meant by that. Um, I just didn't know. And so as... I got into the job. There was so much persecution there. I was being cussed out every day. It's been lied on. My job was being threatened to be taken from me. Um, I had people to tell me, you can't preach or teach the gospel here. And why are you trying to help these kids? They lost cause because I worked at a juvenile detention center. So it was much persecution. And when the persecution came, the Lord would have me go back to the offender and apologize to them and forgive them. I did. It was it was a step. It wasn't just go to your brother and say I forgive you. He he had to say I had to say to them forgive me. Mm. I had to apologize and then forgive them, even though rightfully so I didn't cause. The offense. I didn't cause the provocation, you know, for them to be provoked to cuss me out. I'm sitting there quiet, minding my own business. I tried to be under the radar, but the more I tried to be under the radar, the more I was a target. And so being there, what it taught me ultimately is I was in the army of the Lord and it, it just It's the book that God gave Chris to write, What is the Will of God? I was being taught the will of God by the things I suffered. Mm. I had to bow and yield my will to God that he would be made perfect through me by the things I suffered. So I'm going to tell you, if, if you're looking to be in this life and don't think you should go through nothing, think that prayer is going to save you from everything it's not what prayer does is build you up and it fortifies you and it causes you to go through the storm now you go and you read the life of David read, read his life that's in first and second Samuel read the Psalms where you see in in first and second Samuel the life of David but in the Psalms, you see David, how he reacted and what he was doing and how he was praying to be perfected in the things of God. I'm telling you, if you think that you're going to come into the kingdom of God and not be affected by the outside world, that's a myth. That's a lie. That's a lie that the enemy wants you to believe that you can't make it or you got to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. Now, was I perfect in all the years I was being made there? No. I made mistakes. I did things wrong. I'm just being honest and transparent. But God protected me because I went to him on my knees and I cried out to him. It was a very, very special time in my life that I will never forget. The Lord brought to my remembrance just now. I would go in the bathroom. Those, those. Now the, the place was a pretty clean facility, but even so, I would lay down on the floor, put a piece of paper towel over my over my face where my face would lay, and prostrate and pray in a jail cell. In, in a bathroom of a jail cell, I would pray 
on my face and cry out to God. Very humbling. And, and it's that humility. It's that you got me. It's that I'm dying here. I need you. David had a prayer. He says, he said, the enemy was camped around about me. He said, and I cried out to you, and you heard my prayer. I don't know that any of you have had to go through those type of sufferings, but if you do, you're being made by God. It is for a purpose. It's for him to use you. Amen. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Is there anybody that's new to the faith? You kind of want to tell your testimony, like a, sh or just agree to that you see that things are happening, you know, in in the faith. According, you know, because you became a believer, you know, it's spiritual warfare. You know, it's it's happening because you gave your life to Christ. You know. Is there anybody? Yes. Especially the people closest to you. Like, my family thinks I'm crazy and in a cult, and they say these things about me. And people, at, when I was in the world, nobody complained. Nobody had a problem with me. Mm. Um, but as soon as I came out of the world, the people at work start gossiping about me. And even my family members think I'm too extreme and all that stuff but I really know it's just the enemy yeah and please know uh, Miss Samantha uh, we all love you and you are our family now I'm telling you there used to be a saying blood is thicker than water you know people in the streets use that you know ride or die you know but now as being followers of Christ, spirit is thicker than blood. I'm telling you, we are family. All of us are family. Amen. And, and every yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yesterday, um, I was walking home from work, and it's like a, it's like a 15 minute walk, and the whole time I was in prayer, and I had been fasting. The, the days prior to that too so I was fasting and praying the whole walk just coming against the enemy spiritual warfare and I just felt like the boldness and the fire like I was talking to myself out loud I didn't care if I looked crazy you know <laughs> um, but it's so crazy because just in that 15 minute walk there were people yelling out at me outside um, the cars like People started honking at me and yelling at me. Just, I could just feel hmm. the world around me was triggered that I was just praying and walking out loud and coming against the enemy. And the enemy used people just driving past me in their cars. Like, per like guys were yelling perverted things out the window to me. And just, I, I could just feel it. But I didn't even give it any any energy i just kept praying and praying and there were like two or three encounters like this lady yelled at me out the window because i was trying to walk in the crosswalk and she was like she honked at me and was like my it was i the pedestrian had the right away but she got mad that she had to stop and she honked and sped up and was like my car can go faster than you can and like yelled at me it was just interesting to see how the world around you reacts when you're you're fasted and you're praying up praying up against the enemy. Yeah, Sam, those, those things are gonna happen. And the deeper you go in, the matter Satan is, as long as he can keep you a carnal saint who don't pray, you won't see none of that happening. But the deeper you go in, the matter he is because he knows you about to mess up his kingdom. He knows that you about to grab souls out of the pit. You, they're going to be saved in Jesus name. So his thing is, let me put some fear in her. Let me show her her prayers ain't working. 
That's what he's trying to do. But please know when you see those things happening, you're on the right track. That's when you're pressing even harder. That's when you fortify even harder. That's when you stand up more bold in Jesus' name. And Amen. you don't care. You don't care what nobody say. You don't care about how somebody feel. My family came against me too. All of them disowned me so much so till when I met Chris and we were about to get married. I wanted a private mar- uh, wedding with just our kids there and, and our closest relatives, you know, parents and things like that. But not, not uh, all the whole family, the distant relatives. <laughs> And I, it's not about the wedding itself, but it's about what God did. So, um, my family had persecuted me for years, just like you said. Um, as long as I was out there whoring and, and, and backbiting and drinking and slutting and whatever I was doing, nobody cared about that. Nobody ever tried to talk to me or say, you don't need to be doing that. That's wrong. It's against God's laws. Nobody in my family, because they always doing it. But the minute I turned to God, and I was very radical, I went from that to saved, sanctified, washed in the blood, cleansed, and the word was renewing my mind every day. My mother would every every Sunday, because we were fellowshipping on Sundays then, every Sunday she would start arguing with me while I'm getting ready for, for service. Cussed me out. I mean, I'm not talking about some some little bit. I mean, she would get up in my face, and that devil in her would be railing. You, Emma, Effa, I mean, she would go at it, and I would say, Lord, it got so till on Saturday night, I had to pray and and really go on warfare over this thing to keep it from rearing up. <laughs> It was crazy. Right. I'm telling you, I know your warfare. Mm-hmm. I've been there yeah. many times over. Relatives talking about me. She's crazy. She in a call. Oh, I, I know what you're going through. But let mm-hmm. me tell you, I overcame everything. And I'm Amen. still faithful. I'm still in the faith. And they didn't change me. It made me be more towards God. Because when, and let me t- I'm going to say this. When I was a sinner, and nobody cared for my soul. When I was thinking about committing suicide and taking myself out of this world, then not one of them called me. You know who showed up in the midnight hour for me? The Holy Spirit. Jesus. Father. You know who, who laid on me and fought with me all night to keep me from keeping my taking my life? Father. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. So that's why I can't, they didn't save me. Jesus did. And none of them have paid the price in the midnight oils that I've had to burn for my salvation. Not one. All that talking about me, none of them paid my bills. They still don't pay my bills. Even to the point where the Lord was about to bring me here to Kentucky, none of them supported me. Don. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. You, you Amen. Know, Praise God. I don't want to TMI it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean. Well, here's you, the thing. I, I'd rather speak the truth in love that some will be saved. I know. And I love my family. I don't have no offense against them. But I know the things that I've had to suffer. And that those that persecuted me, they know who they are. And, and the thing about it is I'm not saying any names. But I will, I will say this. I love you. I forgive you. And I pray for your soul, and I pray for your salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' ahead, name, please. amen. Me and Don, we can talk all day. <laughs> I'll call you later. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I want y'all to talk later and just, blah, you know, but for right now, let me read the words of the Lord Jesus. He said, I have come as a light into this world. That whosoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I don't judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. He who rejects me and does not receive my words 
has one that's judge that judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. This is why I stay in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ because he showed me we're going to be side by side with his word. It's going to be us and his word. And he showed me a vision. Like when you was talking, when, when y'all were talking, I'm like seeing that vision. I'm like, Lord, you must want me to talk on that. And then I heard this scripture. Now, people don't have to believe the Bible. You know, because I know there's people laughing at us. They mock us. Ha <laughs> ha. See, but the Lord says they that laugh now, they won't be later. And I saw that. I mean, the cathedrals, the cathedrals in heaven, they are very, very, very big. I mean, it was like a bowl. It was like a big bowl, but it was huge. If, if you all can see it, I mean, you talking, you know how bleachers are? Like when you're watching a game, the stacks was like way up. I mean, I saw it was surrounding and, and, and it was like the Lord has people on display. It's like everybody has to watch this person and what's being said. And I think I already told Don this, but I saw this pool. It, it was like a... A, a calm pool it had all the uh, colors in it. It, it I could tell it was fiery it wasn't bubbling or nothing it was calm and smooth there was a pool and I can tell it was hot you know it was why was that sitting there I don't know but I saw a young lady sitting there and the Lord was talking to her I can't tell you the details of what he was saying but he was talking to this young lady and she was in a seated position. And just by me reading this scripture, I know everything we do, we're going to be side by side with what he said. You see, like he's going to silence us because it's like, oh, yeah, you did say that, you know. And all, all the thing I know is something came out of that pool. Something came out of that pool. And, and went and grabbed this young lady. I don't know if it went through her and pulled her underneath it or grabbed her and pulled her underneath. And I was like, whoa, I, I couldn't believe what I saw. And then the Lord took me out of that vision. I was like, man. And I, whenever I have visions like that, I just want to be on his good side. I just want to be with the good people. I don't want to be a spectacle. You know, I don't want to be a spectacle. You know, though there be many tears, you know, it don't matter. It's like when it's judgment day, everybody, it's judgment day. And the Lord just said the word that he spoke is going to judge us in the last day. I mean, um, like, like, okay, I, I want to talk to us. I'm going to talk to Samantha after we get done with this. I don't want to bring out something the Lord was showing me as far as you praying, but we'll talk about it after afterward. But okay. Yeah, because it's in his word. And it's like whenever I'm doing something, I want his word to like come to my mind and be like, "Oh yeah, you know, See, if I didn't know his word, I wouldn't have none checking me, you know? I hope you all are going through that where you about to slip or you said something, you're like, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? Because his word, because of his word, the word is doing this. It, you know, David said it was good that I was afflicted. Let me look at that one up. I'm going to type in good afflict. I mean, we're not, I'm not trying to scare anybody or anything. It's just, 
it's real. This thing is real and it will happen. I just want everybody who knew me to make it. You know what I mean? I want to make it. Paul told Timothy, take heed to yourself, young man, first and to that doctrine you're in so that you can save yourself and them that's hearing you. See, first, you got to make sure you make it and, and those that's hearing you. Yeah, Psalms 119.71 It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I may learn your statutes. See, it's about learning his word. Statutes is it, basically, it, it's all about the word, the word of God. You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that came out of his mouth. It's about obedience, you know. And I want to get there. I don't ever want to say, I'm tired of the, the, the. No, I'm not tired, you know. The Bible says they hated that light bread, which is that manna. Those people actually was discovered that they hated that manna. We don't want to become people who, I hate, I hate this, I, all this studying. I'm tired of this word, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they need to read about the fall. You know, this person had it all. Perfection and wisdom and beauty you know he had traffic different things that they was their trade he had trade all anything you can imagine you see it's not about having stuff i just want to be on the lord good side because it's either that or will be made a spectacle Look, I had my page marked in the book club. Quayshawn, what was that page you, you took a picture of? Three, three what? 325? Yeah. Yeah, I put it in, I put the screenshot in the messenger thing. Can you read 40.25? What is spiritual warfare? Yeah, I can. In there. 40.25 reads, what is spiritual warfare? It says, spiritual warfare is a battle in which the Holy Spirit equips the intercessor with spiritual armor to fight against the forces of wickedness in times of crisis. And Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 11 reads, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Think on that. You know, because I know some people, they'll they're listening to this they're like like watching a show or something like this this is no game it's like we're going to go through the the different um armaments as far as that's not tangible cuz we're used to in the natural man what my gun at what my what my sword at you know what my whatever at you know what i mean but we should, we're spiritual. It's like, where is this spiritual thing at? You know, we should be like, what, 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 you know? So I'm 1 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. Some, you don't have to copy and paste the whole thing. Can somebody just type it in for me in the timeline? And, and it's the um, weapons of, of warfare spiritually. And it's basically saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly, unregenerated, of an animal instinct governed by mere human nature. 
is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we know we're up, we're working against some strongholds here, you know. And those are the schemes of the devil who caused those strongholds. The devil did something to cause strongholds. Imagine, you know, imagine a clean slate, a little infant, a little infant born into this world. You know, sin is in the in that body, in that it's just baked in there. <laughs> I don't even know why I said baked, but <laughs> Because you don't have to teach a kid to lie or anything. It's just, you know, if you study a kid, they just do stuff automatically because it's in there. You see, but that's what the word of God does is it's a force to combat that thing, that law in that sin nature, you know. Now, a stronghold it means to fortify through the idea of holding safely like a castle and it says it's an argument anything or which for which one relies on reasoning by which a dispute endeavors to fortify a person's opinion and defends it against his opponent you know you know, you're coming with truth, but here's something to combat that truth. That's a stronghold. And I had that, you know, if you all think back, you all had it. And it took the word of the Lord God, which is a hammer and a fire to basically, cons you know, it broke us, you know, it broke, it, it devoured. You know, the hammer and the fire, that word. We allowed it to work. Some people don't allow it to work. They're going to keep bringing up an argument. You know, um, I'm going to say Colossians 3, 5, and 6 is an example. Where is it? I'm going to show you all an example. It says, therefore, put to death, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedient or the children of disobedient. Um, Ephesians 5 and 6. Now it tells us to put away some stuff, but if people don't, that's a stronghold. Ephesians 5, 5 and 6. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. See, can somebody read verse 6 in the Amplified Bible? Ephesians 5 and 6. Let me find it. I got it. All right. Thank you, son. Ephesians 5, 6 in the Amplified Bible reads, Let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, 
those who habitually sin. Yeah. And and I don't believe is you know, they trying to get you to sin is basically they're in that sin and they're making excuses. You know? That it's a stronghold that has them. Is 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 they're gonna and I think you all know what I'm talking about. You can say one well you can say based on the word of God, this, 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 and they say like, they're gonna come with some argument. Or they don't want to hear you. They're going to stop their ears or, hey, listen, I don't want to talk about that. You know what I mean? Now it says casting down, back in 1 Corinthians, casting down imaginations, images, you know, arguments, reasoning, thoughts such as is hostile to the Christian faith. You see, it's all against you, you because you bear the word of God. But we don't we don't have we don't sit and argue with people. You know, I don't go back and forth with people no more. You know, if somebody the Bible says be ready to give an answer to everyone that asks you of your hope. What hope do you have, sir? You know, I'm waiting for that. You know, if somebody see you reading your Bible or whatever, and you're just like, you know, Paul described that, but he used a, a wife to win over a husband. And I believe a husband, vice versa. It says, don't be plaiting your hair and putting on these nice clothes to win him over. But, you know, let it be the, the I, I, I really should turn to it. It's first Peter chapter three. Now it says wives likewise be uh, <clears throat> it says wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word, see they're not they're not obeying it, but you are. They without a word may be won by the conduct, see, of their wives. And some a fellow can have a, a lady that they're not obeying the word. So it can be both ways. It says, number in number two, it says, when they observe your chaste conduct, accompanied by fear. Do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair or wearing gold or putting on fine clothes, apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. You know, and then it it, it went into showing that Sarah, she was a good, uh, op, you know, person to model after. If you all want to continue to read this. But the focus is on they're watching you. People are watching you. Don't use manipulative things. Like I believe when people, you know, dressing up or even I don't know you, you all know what I'm talking about don't let it be nothing else just live live the life before that person that's how you're gonna win them over they're they're watching you it says your chase conduct and they see your reverence you know that you have toward the Lord God now don't mess up because boy they'll they'll eat it up you know what I mean ah <laughs> Look what you did. You you're a hypocrite. You know. <laughs> so we want to be true. We do want to be true. You know, we want to wake up 
knowing we got a cross to bear. Others are depending on us. Because there's argument, you know. The carnal mind is extreme hostile to God. It's just don't want to be subject to, to the law of God, to his word. It just wants to put up an argument against him. And you ain't right because of that, you know, just want to. But we're, we're to be humble. Humble yourselves under his mighty hand. And we got to cast down arguments. And every high thing, we got it continues to try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, which I put, it is written. You know, that's what we have to have in us. Oh yeah, it, it is written. You know, the word won over me wanting to give in and do this and do that. Oh yeah. It is written, Lord. Yeah, you did say, you know, and I'm I'm always going to get that and I want that. And it says, and bringing into captivity every thought. See, it's all in the thought process of us, everybody. You got to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's all about learning Christ, learning what not to do, what to do. And having in a readiness to revenge or punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I mean, not too many people can get there because our obedience isn't fulfilled. So how can we... You know, say, hey, brother, let me get that little splinter out of your eye. You know, when you got a big, you see, the Lord taught about that. Weapon number one, obedience to God's word. Learn it, do it. You know, James 1 and 22 says, be doers of the word. Don't just be hearing it. We got to do it. Me too, all of us. Weapon number two, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on righteousness. Ephesians 4.23 says, put on righteousness and true holiness. So that must mean there's a false holiness. Like the Pharisees, the ones that they was looking holy. They had all this stuff on, walking around like they're all holier than thou. That, that That's not holy. The Lord looks at the heart. True holiness. Piety, it says. Piety is true reverence toward God. And David says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Another um, weapon is fasting coupled with prayer. Another one is spiritual songs. Another one is Christian fellowship. You know, because iron sharpens iron and so does you know, each one of us sharpens one another. That's a weapon. It's like we should never isolate ourselves. Mm. Weapon number three, put on the whole armor of God. Not some of the pieces. Don't put on some of the pieces. Put on the whole armor of God. Quayshon, can you take a picture of the next page, 326? Yeah, okay. Because it's showing the armor. I don't want this to be like, you know, like, uh, what, what's a good example? Story time, you know? 
<laughs> I don't want this to be like, oh, let's listen to this good word today, this good sermon from this young man. You know, this we this is real. And when stuff start happening, that makes it even more real. I believe that's why as soon as we get this word, stuff happens. Did y'all notice that? Like when, when you're getting the word, something will come and test you and try you. Did you all know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But it says the enemy, the devil comes immediately for that word's sake. I mean, I've been I've been testing on a lot of things. I just take it patiently, take it patiently, take it patiently. <laughs> I mean, one one time I walked for miles. I walked on along the freeway. I don't know why I chose to walk the freeway. I mean, I probably could have cut through the town. And got there, man, I lost my paycheck while walking. Oh, man. And then when I got home, I didn't. I don't know why I didn't know I could tell my employer and they could cut me another one. I went looking for that paycheck on my bicycle. Ugh. So I went back looking at every piece of paper on the ground. <laughs> I found it. I did find it. Now, let me see. Who else have this book? Or if you can blow up that image under the um, the uh, timeline, can somebody read forty point twenty six for us? It's good to get involved, everyone. Will there be one? If not, I will do it. It says, what is spiritual armor? 40.26. The Holy Spirit gives us the following armor. A. Truth for the loins. Through previous encounters in prayer, we are strengthened in the knowledge of the truth that we can declare war and battle against the lies of the devil. See, Imagine you don't know any word. What is your defense when this devil come with lies? Do I have that as one of the benefits? See, I can add to that list if I didn't put that one down. Uh oh, I think I'll. 26, 40.26. Okay. I think I lost sound to my. I need to order that book. I still don't have it. Yeah, to Keisha, she. I'll send you the link. To Keisha, she's. Okay. Takesha's on here and she ordered hers electronically, but we want to encourage you all to get this in case the power or something goes out. And then you can, you know, get you a candle or something, you know, go old school on you. But anyway, uh, let me... Truth voice. I'm typing in a scripture. This is what Jesus told Pilate. He said, my kingdom 
is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Or well, are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause was I born, and for this cause have I come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who hears the truth hears my voice. But I know everybody that there's distractions. I know everybody. I'm alive too, I know. There's distractions. These things are all here. It's a test. Who do you love? You know what I mean? It's like, what do you value the most? He said, uh, everyone that is of the truth continues to hear my voice. If you are of the truth, and he is truth, if you're of him, you're going to hear his voice. That is armor, armor, armor. What time is it? Twenty-seven. All right. B. Righteousness. Righteousness as a breastplate. So we we got truth around our loins. Breastplate. According to the scriptures, God hears the prayers of a righteous man. He is one who has the freedom to approach God. Because his conscience is pure and he feels no guilt for sin. Wow. Righteousness. That is an armor to have. Imagine if you didn't have that, you're open. Your, your breastplate is kind of blocking that vital organ. You see? Wow. Number C. If anybody want to read, let me know and I'll stop. C. Peace for your feet. Our motive in seeking the Lord must be the desire to bring reconciliation between God and man, not revenge. The preparation of the gospel of peace. Let me find that one. You and I were talking about that revenge. Um, it was something we were talking about yesterday. And I was telling you that God is not about revenge. Oh, I know what it was. It was the Israelites. Um, as you guys know, there's in Israel, there's a war right now. And I was watching the news. And they were part of the army. And they were saying that they were going to get their revenge. And I said, see, they're not spiritually minded. Now, God can tell an army to go off to war. But when you have it in your heart, that deception of revenge, is God going to be glorified or are you going to be glorified? Are, is your heart going to be warm and fuzzy after you go and kill some of their people like they killed some of your people? That makes you just like them. And God can't uphold evil. When God takes revenge on someone, it's to bring them to repentance. That's the whole point. When God said, vengeance is mine, and I will repay what is right, it's to bring somebody to repentance. Now, there's a time for repentance. 
And then once repentance, you haven't received that repentance in that that season, that that uh, dispensation, then God closes that door, and now judgment comes. But when man go and kill somebody, that person has the opportunity to repent. And here, here we are trying to take on the position of God. I decide whether you live or die. Even though you killed my child, you raped my child, you you burnt my house down, whatever they did. It could be the most hideous crime you can think of, yet God can forgive them for that evil. We have to be careful what we allow in our hearts. We have to be careful. We have to be the spiritual Israel. And how you spiritually is an Israelite is by the working of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who was a true Hebrew, a true Israelite, who loved God and followed God's commandments in his word. He is the word, but God gave him the word. And he obeys the word. And so must we. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I want to read <clears throat> Ephesians 2. Somebody can just post it. Ephesians 2, 11 through 18 about peace. I'm going to read it out of the New King James. It says, Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called uncircumcision made in the flesh by hands that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. For he himself is our peace. He is our peace who has made both one, see, both Jew, Gentile, he made them one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the hatred, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Do this, do that, do that, do that. So as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace see the two that became one we we go out and make peace and that he might reconcile them both to god in one body through the cross thereby putting to death the enmity and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near for through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So that's his ultimate plan. This is still happening today. Anybody outside of that is not of peace. And your feet should be, should be covered with, I'm going to just say, put on them peace shoes. You know, put your shoes... Your peace shoes on for the for the walking. D faith as a shield. Through experience, we have faith to believe God. God gives us power not only to overcome the attacks of the devil, but to defeat him as well. Faith. You know the Lord Jesus. He said, when he come, will he find faith on the earth? It's a test. Your faith is tested. A lot of people, they're going to give up the faith. They're going to cave in. Let me see. I had wrote...
rotation, 135. Yep, that's found in Luke 18 and 8. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Jesus says also, because you kept his word to persevere, the word of his patience, he said he will also keep you in the hour of temptation that will come on the whole earth to try everybody. He said men, men should always, always pray and not faint or lose heart. You know, some people they say, I don't pray no more because God don't ever answer it anyway. You know, so I stopped praying. Why pray? Uh, so he said, men are, we are to always pray and not lose heart. Persevere. And that's your shield. And if you got a shield, that means something's coming at you. Something's coming at you for you to have to put the shield up. You know, fiery darts of the wicked, it could be lies, you know? He put out a lie on you and and there's nothing you can do to clear your name. That lie is out there, you know? They lied on the Lord Jesus. The lie still went out to the people, you see? Did he clear up his name and, be, and everybody was like, oh, we excuse Jesus now. You know, we found out the truth wrong, you know? So keep the faith. Don't let that cause you to be weak in your faith. Know why these things are happening. See, it's a shield. Keep that shield up. If we know his word, we won't be offended. But if you all don't know his word, you're going to be offended. Because the Bible says many will hate one another, betray one another to death, right? Because guess what? The hour of temptation is coming. Remember when Jesus was about to go to the cross and he told him, pray, pray, you guys, lest you enter into temptation. And he came and checked on them and they were asleep. And he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, the inner person, I want to pray, but this body, <laughs> sleep, right? He saw they, they really want to do it, but the flesh is weak, you know? But look, soon as Judas came with them soldiers with the torches, and, and it was on, it was, it was going down, right? They wasn't ready. It says everybody forsook him and ran. So the hour of temptation. It, it, it says that uh, then shall they deliver you up. It's, it's, it's saints on this earth right now going through like the saints of old. And I know the Lord is with them. You know, he don't just leave us out there by ourselves. Don't think that when the Lord see that you, one man said, it's like about, you're about to board this airplane, whatever trial that thing is, that airplane say that airplane is the trial right before you're about to board that aircraft, that trial, he gives you the ticket. You don't have the ticket in your hand walking around with it, waiting on the flight. Soon as that trial comes that you got to face, he hands you the ticket, you're covered. He got you. He's that fourth man in the fire type deal. See, he wasn't with them outside of that fire, you see. But boy, when they was in the fire, you see, 
But people won't know. They'll be like, I'm scared and give up the faith. I renounce Jesus. And not knowing it's a man, if they only knew. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's how it's going to be. But this is people of faith. Where is your faith? We, we must be true, everybody. We can't be faking this thing. This thing isn't fake. And, and I just hope everybody ready. Now, some people, you know, I saw this young lady in a vision. She was crying. She was crying. She was crying and crying and crying. And people was trying to do that reasoning thing we talked about earlier, trying to use the scriptures you know, and say, God will forgive you. You know, the Bible says, this, you know, trying to use the word. And that girl pushed him away. She pushed him away because she knew the word. She knew there's no, there's no repentance from that one. If I take the mark or the number of this, this man's name, if I get his name put on me, or that Mark put on me. It's actually two of them. The scripture mentioned it. You guys should check it out. Um, let me find that one. I just failed to find that one. Drink. I'm going to put. Cup. Indignation. Okay, that's in Revelations chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, if somebody can post that one. And put above it, there's no repentance for taking the mark of the beast. It says, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast, and his image and receives his mark on their forehead or on his hand he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and their smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worships the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. See, there's no repentance. Some people will come and try to lie and say, you, you'll be forgiven if you, if you took it. Uh, don't worry, da, 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 God, uh, did not he say this, or this? You know, trying to use some other scriptures. Wrong. I just felt to put that on record. The Lord wanted that to go on record. Faith. Don't give up the faith. Whoever's out there about to give up the faith, don't give up, don't give up the faith. It's your shield. It lies. Fiery darts of the enemy is lies too. You know? Bunch of lies. Know the word and you won't, you know, fall for a lie. The helmet of salvation, having the assurance of our salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have confidence knowing that we belong to him and he will help us fight the battle. The helmet of salvation. See, the helmet and the sword go together. It's the word of God. It says, the word of God which is born in us as a result of travailing prayer becomes the sword that destroys the enemy. It's all about Remember in the garden, he told Eve, has God said, you know, here he came with reasoning and then got her to thinking, hmm, 
wow, I never heard that before. He does know that if you, you're you going to be as God's knowing good for evil. She probably was like, for real? You know, add stuff to the word. You see, that devil added something to the word of God. And it does say praise God. You got to enter into his presence through praise and thanksgiving. So don't for, never forget that's a, 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 um, a weapon of our warfare, everyone. Please lift up a hallelujah or something. If, if, it, if you don't know songs, just sing hallelujah from your heart. You got to, you know, close your eyes, get in the spirit, see the Lord. Like, ask him, Lord, show, uh, reveal yourself to me. Make yourself real to me. I, I want to see you. You know that it's a song say, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. You know, see his glory. You know that song, see his glory come down. Praise his name. Heaven reigns. See his glory come down. You know, find some spiritual song, somebody, everybody. You know, weapons of your warfare. You got to get one. You got to get some in your heart. You can't be like, where my MP3 player at? Oh, where my iPod? You know, <laughs> I hope this is helping somebody. Now, for the remainder of the time, what time is it? We're just going to talk freely. Anybody, anybody, anything. I'm going to, can I share a dream I had? Yes, please. So... Worship warfare is one of the most powerful forms of warfare is just worshiping the Lord, you know? Mm. So I had a dream that there was a demon in my house and it started manifesting through this lady. And as soon as I saw the demon manifesting through her, I put on this song. It's called Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm. And I had no fear in the dream of this demon. Like, I almost had joy. I just had the joy of the Lord. So I started blasting this, sh this song, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I was just singing and dancing and praising mm. around my house with the music blasting. And the demon left. Yes. So the Lord was just showing me, like, through praise and worship and song, it, it defeats the darkness, you know? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I would love to hear that song. Not, I mean, not saying sing it. Now I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it in the group. But, but oh, yeah, that would be wonderful. But if you do want to sing it, you can. <laughs> I'll, I'll say if she do want to sing it, a part of it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. You could probably want to, you know. Yeah. I mean, we gotta. But, you want to sing the song, Sam? Or just a piece of it? I mean. Yeah. Go ahead. So it goes, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach, He's the roaring lion of Judah, and He's holy. He is Lord. Praise the God of Israel, he's the bright and morning star, mm. the Holy One of Israel, he's our Savior and our God. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I felt the anointing on that song. I'm going to learn. Please send that to us. Yeah, that is beautiful. I mean, I'm gonna learn everybody, <laughs> if you can find it, like in YouTube, later post it in the timeline. And everyone should um, really listen to that song and learn it. 
Learn something. Anointed. Get a song yeah. in your heart. Somebody. Somebody. Everybody. Yes. I, I wanted to bring to our attention, I don't know how many of you know this, but the books of Psalms was actually sang in the temple. So the whole book of Psalms, so from one to, I think it's 130, no, 150 some Psalms, those, those Psalms were sang. They, they just weren't writ written, and um, it was music put to it, and they were saying, like one of the ones that we, the Holy Spirit had given the church where um, I used to go, we say many Psalms, um, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Right now. Be still and know that I am God. This is weapon. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Those are songs yes. that was written with victory. Yes. And power. Weapons of our war. Who is the King of Glory? He is the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is the King of Glory? He is the Lord, mighty in battle. He is the Lord of hosts, the exalted one. He is the King. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, lift them up, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory. The King of glory, He shall come in. These are Psalms. That's Psalms 24. Amen. I'm telling you, they were all saying. Now the Lord gave us a, a, a different rendition of it. I'm sure David probably sang it a little different back then. But man, those songs have kept me through the years. And I, 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 I sing many. I said, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, my soul, and all oh, that is within, within me, bless his holy name. Psalms 103. And that psalm, if you read it, talks about the benefit of God. Bless the Lord. So, please, learn the psalms. And you can put your own music to it. You can put your own melody to it. It's your yes. choice. But I'm telling you, if you learn the song, there's nothing but songs that were sang unto the Lord by David and many others. All the songs is not written by um, uh, different, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're different writers. They weren't all written by David. That's what I was trying to say. I'm going to sing one more and then we're going to close this out. A uh, very powerful one in Psalms 1. Now, that, that one's powerful, so Lord, give me grace to sing it. <laughs> All right. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the thoughts of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaves. 
25 and 26 as confirmation it says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed that's spiritual, you know, for bands being loosed. Whoa. And you know what? One person, like in the spirit, one person or a group of people praying, trading off. I'm talking, it's the same prayer. And, and, and the Holy Spirit being in each person picks right up where that person left off. And, and, and then you got this group of people there singing a song, you know, because it's scriptural. Look what happened, you see? It's proven it is a mighty weapon. Prayer coupled with praise together. Hallelujah. If you all don't know those songs, sing hallelujah and then say Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit. You know, and then go back to hallelujah. If nothing else, you see, and the Lord is trying to help somebody here. The Lord is trying to help somebody. Don't just be downtrodden. Don't just lay there and cry. You know, oh, the Lord will see my tears and get me out. You know, do something. Shake yourself. Put on your strength, O Zion. You know, yes. the Lord is, he's, he's, you know, he'll let us go through some things. And then he'll lift. The Lord will let stuff lift. But he's, he's, he's coaching us, teaching us, you know. And I hope people get it. And 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 don't be a crybaby. I'ma just say it. We can't just be a crybaby. Now there's days where we do get silent. The Lord might want silent. You know where you just quiet. And that's that's uh, warfare too. Is that 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 silence? God, the Lord shows up in silence. Did you all know that? He's not in all that noise. You know, let yes. let all flesh keeps quiet. You know, the Lord when he when he's here, it's like, but it's spiritual. It's like in the spirit that silence, not that you just don't talk or say anything. Even tears. Some people can cry, start crying, and oh, here come here come our Father. You see, when certain people cry, 
Oh, it does something to him. You know, it's just, it's, it's something coming. I don't want to miss that outpouring. The Bible says, you know how, okay, you see how everything's dying outside because it's fall. Then it's going to be winter. And you notice when spring comes, that rain that came down, it watered and made everything, bloop, start budding again. There's a scripture that says, at an appointed time, God is going to speak a word and, and everyone will be like those trees and, and grass and, you know, shrub just, you know, it says, so shall my word be. As the rain comes down and waters the earth and make it, it's like we don't, we just want to be in his word and, 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 and it's, it's him who did it, you know. Can't nobody take credit, you know, and, and and it's just a supernatural open. It's like a freedom. It's like you'll be in a large place. It's, it's like it's coming. It's here. It won't be no more struggle, if I may say. It's not like you're going to go to sleep and wake up. You lost it. You know, it's like you're you're the closer the Lord is getting. And then when he finally arrives, it'll be a pop. And so shall you ever be like him and with him, you know. But just don't give up, you know. Don't give up. Whoever's out there hearing this, don't give up. Now, our time has expired. I'm going to uh, say the benediction over everyone listening and watching the Lord bless all of you the Lord Yahweh Yahweh bless all of you the Lord Jesus the Lord Yeshua bless all of you and keep all of you protect you and sustain you and guard you the Lord make his face to shine upon you with favor and be gracious to all of you surrounding you with loving kindness the Lord lifts up his face upon you with divine approval and give you all peace and tranquil heart and life and now unto him who who is able he is able to keep you from stumbling or falling into sin and perdition and to present you unblemished blameless and faultless in the presence of his glory in the presence of his glory with triumphant joy and unspeakable delight to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord and Master be glory majesty dominion and power and authority before all times and now and forevermore every anyone out there who receives this amen it and so be it unto you in peace amen, amen, amen. be unto amen. you in the name of the lord jesus christ yeshua peace be unto all of you and strength from the lord jesus christ be strengthened in the lord by this word which has washed you and renewed your renewed you in mind thank you lord I just want to thank him. Thank you so much, thank Father. You, Father. Love Jesus. you, Father. You are with Amen. us. You have not abandoned us. Yes, you have not cast you. us away. And you have not taken your Holy Spirit away from us. Thank, thank, you, Father. thank you, Father, for keeping thank us, you, Lord. Lord. You which has begun this good work in all of us, you will perform it, complete it until your coming. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, until we all meet again. Now, we're going to, I'm going to end the live. Let me mute up here. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody on uh, Facebook and YouTube. If you all want to join us, you're welcome. We're just people who love the word. We're going to stay in that word, word until the Chris Lord. Chris has muted us. He'll be right back. He's been. Okay, I had to cut that speaker off. I don't care for these little hiccups. It's just, we're real people, 
And we just want to be in this word when the Lord shows up, when he cracked the sky. You know, there will be people in pockets, it come calamities, whatever may come our way. We're just going to coerce, be in this word, be in this word to where if somebody try to take our tablets or our books or whatever, it's in, it's in our heart. And we're going to talk that word till the Lord shows up. And forever will we be with him in the ages to come and all eternity. So I just want to say goodbye to everyone. Be blessed out there. We love you. This is Brother Chris. My wife is Sister Don here on the picture. And we love you. Until next time, you all keep the faith. Have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, and a blessed year. We love you. Take care.